How old are you? Next month, I'll be 68. Looking good for 68, man. I am. I don't look bad. I see guys my age, they're fucked. Yeah. Can they still do jiu-jitsu? Not the way I do, no. When they, they don't like to train with me. That would be nice training at 68. Yeah, it would. Let's get, let's get into the podcast. Let's get started. They, right. they don't like to train with me. No, because you're a fucking bully. Yeah. Let's, let's get started. Welcome back to the Charles Ogham Experience, Mr. Maurice, Mauricio Gomez. Great to see you. <laughs> it can't be a welcome back. I've never been here. No, no, I'm welcoming, I'm welcoming back to our fans. Oh. A large fan base, Owen Flanagan. The podcast. Welcome back. Oh, good thanks, thanks. So, so great to be here. Good to see you. Man, wait a minute. That's the ham rough. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. Look, that's, that's, that's how we handshake. That's, 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 that's how we Shake my hand like a man. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's how we shake my hand. Shake his hand. Shake a proper hand. Give it a proper hand. I don't want to. Okay, shake it. I don't want to. Oh, God. That's like that painting in Rome. You know, that little painting. They go all the way there to take a painting, a picture of a painting on the that's it. That's the 16th that's a, chapel. That's a manly hey, handshake. That's the 16th chapel. Yeah, that's whatever what chapel it Man, is. You, you're going to have to get that mic in nice yeah. and tight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Constant reminder. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, Great to see you. Sir. It's my pleasure to be here. What an honor. What an honor. Honor is all mine. <laughs> Tell us about when you first came to the UK opening up Kensal, Kensal Road. I didn't open Kensal Road. Did you not? When no, did you sir, start? Did you start th- uh, that was Roger. He started that? Yeah. When did you start? Roger started 20 years ago. When did I started 25 years ago. Where? When I had nothing. In Birmingham, in an old church. Ooh. It was colder inside than out. <laughs> I taught on a mat that was this thick. Fucking hell. Yeah, and it was freezing. I had maybe, on a good day, six students. Wow. And you what, what belt that? Just black belt then? Me? Yeah. Yeah, 1998. Yeah, yeah. I got my black belt in 81. I, yeah, yeah. How, how many dance black belts were you done? I don't know, man. How am I supposed Enough. to know that? Probably six. Yeah, yeah. Nah, 98. Yeah, maybe five. Teaching on five dance. Teaching on we ten months. We never count these dance and. It, like pe- people are so concerned about how many dances they have. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> just, just time elapsed, isn't it? It's yeah, time elapsed. Nobody elapsed. cares. What belt are you? I'm yeah. a purple. I'm a brown. I'm a yeah. Fine. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. That's, that's, that's enough for information. <laughs> oh, I'm a white belt. Second dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who gives a fuck? <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! Change the whole Instagram no, profile. Stripe brown belt. <laughs> oh, good for you. Yeah. Nice, <laughs> Jesus, man, come on, boss. You're a, Respect. You're a belt. Yeah, <laughs> and, you tra- and you train while you don't. Huh? And you train while or you don't, kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Boy. I am a belt. So yeah, I came here. I brought Roger with me. It was a blue belt. He used to help me with the classes, as much as we had students. Some. Yeah, and started slowly, very, very slow. I had to work 29 days a month to make ends meet, doing seminars all over the north. That's why I know so much of the UK. Seminars all the time. Because I started in the Midlands, and the strong, the strength of the English grappling comes from up north. The northerners. The northerners. Catch wrestling. Right. Yeah. Was it big back then, catch wrestling? Really? Big. But, uh, and you have the wrestlers uh, that are tough, you know. Try to put a wrestler with his back on the floor. Boy, How to they train their whole lives to not do that. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, if, it, if it's not a proper sweep. Pinning wrestlers is boy, tough. Boy, yeah, yeah. He bounces right back up. <laughs> so, uh, in the beginning, as any profession, in any, when you decide to move to another country and start something, man, it's, it's hard. You have to l- have a lot of patience and a lot of, yeah, willpower. How would you advertise 
back in back in the day where there's no Facebook or Instagram and you have six students. We didn't. You didn't advertise. Or was it just I made friends. <coughs> there were two magazines in this country. Hmm. Martial Arts Illustrated and the Combat Mag magazine. So I made friends with a guy that had a monthly article. Get the <coughs> mic, man. Get the fucking mic. Get him and his mic. I'm getting out of the mic. He's, he's bringing it back to Get me. Get in there. Hunting. <laughs> he's hunting me. <laughs> so I met a guy called Rick Young. Rick Young. This country has... It's funny uh, saying it now because when I first arrived here, <laughs> England was mostly a country. Of, I, you had students with Bruce Lee tattooed on his arms. Now it's all about striking, no touching. You, you touch a, a guy. Oh, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> Take your hands off me. No Wing, touching. Wing Chun, karate kind yeah, of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. It was really big. So they had some martial artists in the, the country, like Bob Breen, Rick Young, and others. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna th I, may, uh, I might forget one or two, so I'm not going to stop with these two that are my really close friends. Anyway, Rick became my first black belt. First black belt, uh, first English black belt to receive a black belt here in this country. It was him and um, Mark Walder, Jude Samuels, and um, uh, but this took years anyway. Birmingham became my. Uh, I tried my best to do what I could with the, with, with what I had. <clears throat> and um, it was not easy. And then there was no money to be made. I was struggling a lot. Financially and. Um, uh, I ended up going back to Brazil, but at the same time, I had a small group because at the same time, I started because I was I was teaching all over the place, right? So I had my gym, I taught there every day, but seminars all over the country, not yeah, yeah, all all across the country, every every little city that you can think of, I've been, I've taught in the back of pubs, on the floor, backyards. No mats. Everywhere. <laughs> what? No mats. Pubs and just grass. Just grass. <laughs> Once I, I got to a guy's gym, this was a zillion years ago, and the guy said, though, whenever you walk into a place, you're kind of looking around, okay, where am I going to teach, right? Yeah. So I saw this massive canvas on the floor. So I said, oh, God damn it. And I, I don't remember the guy's name. So where are we doing this? <laughs> right over there where we train. said, Good, let's skip the takedowns then. <laughs> let's go straight to the floor. <laughs> one and two of them used to go visit me every week. Then the next week, one of them had a broken collarbone and said, well, uh, well, you couldn't expect much training where you guys train. You can train on the goddamn concrete. Come on. Hot. <laughs> Poor. Crop Hot there's a There's a, a, a limit between I'm, I'm tough and I'm rough or being sensible and, you know, come on, that's just plain stupid. What, what would you teach them? What were the first, like, what were the first things that you would teach? <sighs> Neon belly yeah. breaking the ribs. You know, it <laughs> depends on the group. Charles, it's a, uh, I don't, I, I, I have certain settings in my mind. Uh, because I always, I, if I'm going to teach one hour, an hour and a half, or two hours, but back in those days, if you travel to do a seminar, they were like three, four hours. Yeah. So you spent the whole day there. And in the end of the four hours, you would stop in the middle for a water break. And that's when you took merchandise to try to sell in the middle of the seminar to try to make a little bit more cash. Right. right. T-shirts or there was no rash guards back then. Geese. It was no geese were too heavy <laughs> to take. That's a carrying a bunch of geese. Right? Yeah, 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 no, you have to. Uh, I try to uh, take a suitcase. With Trim balloon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you take t-shirts, hoodies, uh, uh, caps, that kind of thing. Yeah. So you open up your your store. If you sell some, fine. If you don't, no. Nice. Close, and then <coughs> go home. And. Um, yeah, that 
that's what we did back then because it was very difficult to get people to do seminars. And the people didn't know I ain't doing this jujitsu thing. But the UFC was on its way up. So unintentionally, you had a lot of people that would go to your gym and say, oh, I like the UFC stuff. And that, they'll be like, oh, this is UFC. Yeah. Good. And then you have to try to, because what happened a lot in the beginning, especially with the, with the UFC thing, you had a lot of guys that were black belts or martial artists already. They were tough people that would come to your gym, said, man, I'm only interested in the... In the Striking. In, in the, uh, no, the groundwork. Right, right. In the groundwork. That's what I want to learn. That's what I don't know. So you would have to accommodate that with the fact of the matter that were some people there that never put a gi on his life. He just walked through your door. No, he doesn't know what he's doing at all. He doesn't know how to stand up, how to fall down. So you had to mix a class in order f to, you know, make everybody happy and watch out on when the sparring came because some were strong. They just didn't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. that, w that was why it was so easy to control them. I had a guy walk into the gym once. It was a Saturday. I'll never forget. No, it was a, this was another guy. A guy walks to the gym on a Saturday morning. With Saturday morning, we had a, a little bit more people that came, including the guys that I was teaching in London. Mm. So we had a good session at sometimes 15 guys. That was a good day. Yeah. So this guy walks in the gym, just in my arm. I want to become a ninja. <laughs> ninja. Oh, oh, God almighty. That's, that's the go-to. One, 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 <laughs> ninja. Of, one of those. So, <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Do you know what a ninja does? Yeah. <laughs> he fights. <laughs> he does this and that. Fair enough. Do you have a gi? No. Shorts? Yep. <laughs> Get changed. Step on the mat. <laughs> <laughs> Did you beat the shit out of him? No. No, I wouldn't do that. I'd have... Someone else beat the shit out of him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the yeah, enforcer. No, you, you'd beat you'd you'd beat the higher a little higher guy. <laughs> the really really cruel ones you leave for you. I had a, a couple of blue belts already. They were pretty good. Yeah, they were decent. Yeah, they could look out. If they didn't, then I would step in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a guy walk in the gym once. He wouldn't fit through the store. And she did not. He was huge. So he he walks into the. I, it was an old church, so the door was small. So he ducked in. I just saw this guy like, looking in and going up. And I looked at him and said, God, you're big. <laughs> and, and he looks at me. I came to this gym because somebody told me that here I can spar. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the guy. You've come to the right place. Go get changed. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes out of the changing room with a gi. Uh, the, the Short sleeve gi. He probably yes. had like a... Three when he was legs. 17. <laughs> Three, quarters. <laughs> <laughs> Three quarters of the arm. An arm the size of my leg because he was massive. And um, so I couldn't let him with anybody. He would just break the person. <laughs> so I had to spar with the guy. He became my best friend. Yeah. Oh, he loved it. Yeah. Yeah, he loved it. <laughs> you just can't get him. You can't allow guys like that to pin you down because it's a nightmare to get out. Nightmare. But I was quick. So, yeah. His first arm bar was a treat. Ooh, I loved it. <laughs> that big old arm. <laughs> 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 Bending backwards and him yelling. <laughs> 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 uh, that's it, to my friend. <laughs> you don't have to throw people because his fame. Yeah, yeah. He was a bouncer, and um, Birmingham has a street called Broad Street. That's where all the nightclubs are and everything like that. Yeah. I don't know if it's still like that. This was 25 years ago. Anyway, <coughs> he was known to throw people out the 
by the window. <laughs> you know. Just get him a fucking throw yeah. him out. <laughs> get the so, fuck out of here. Yeah, so he lost his job. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he didn't That's want him more. working there anymore. <laughs> so he got a, a job at the Birmingham New Street. That's the main station of uh, Birmingham. So whenever I was waiting for a train, he would come. <laughs> hey, hello. <laughs> that massive human being. What a nice guy, man. I made some really S- good lovely. friends up there. Uh, so how long were you in Birmingham for? Because you, then you said you went back to Brazil. 98, 99, 2000. Yeah. And then I went to Brazil. It wasn't working at all. I was actually struggling a lot. A lot. And um, John Donnelly, you know John Donnelly? Yeah, yeah. John Donnelly was one of the partners in a gym That's here best. in London called The Third Space. You yeah. worked there. Huh? You've been there before? Yeah. The, the Third Space. So that choke zone was built for you. For me. Ah. With the, the guy that built it, was, he had a company called Choke. So it became the choke zone. So that's. That's how I got a job in London. That and you were training people in the third space Soho in the choke, the choke zone? Um, I came back to, to England in the end of 2000. Right. For that job. But it was September, I think, October of 2020. But the gym was delayed in opening. It, it only opened, I think, in, if I'm not mistaken, May. 2021 yeah so I John actually found me a place to teach it doesn't exist anymore it a club in High Street Kensington nice called the Club Kensington okay and I taught there a lot the owner Daniel Zola was a martial artist too, a kickboxing guy, and he loved martial art, and he was detrimental in, in boosting what we had here. Without him, in the beginning there, we would struggle. How so? To find a nice place to teach is not easy, you know that. It's not easy, you know. Maybe it is now, but years ago, to find a place that had mats, because you had to have mats. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and a decent space to put the mats on. So you gotta put the mats on and put the mats out every day or not every, every session. And it was a gym, proper gym. Cycling and everything, so. So you guys had like a designated space for that, like corner of the gym? We, we, we did. It was kind of in the middle of the gym. There was a area where they used to do uh, yoga or dancing. It was like a corner. So all the bicycles and running machines, they faced that way. Right. So Pretty good. Free, free advertising. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes, no, people are like, ooh, I don't want to be in there. Yeah. Because it was yeah. a bit rough. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you start getting more customers in there? Word of mouth? Word of mouth. Yeah, yeah. People going. And the guy, my friend Rick Young, yeah. uh, started writing about jujitsu and about us. In the magazine. In the martial art, illustrated. I had an article there about my, me and Roger twice, I think. How old's Roger at this point in Kensington High Street? How old? Yeah, what about? Um, Roger. Eighteen, right? Eighteen, yeah, yeah. Eighteen years old, yeah. You and him teaching them. We used to teach there. Yeah, it was nice. And then I left. Where'd you go? I went back to Brazil again. Still couldn't make it. Yeah, the money that I was making in one job, I could pay my rent. And even though I was still doing a bunch of seminars every weekend, I couldn't, because I had a wife and, uh, and, and a kid. So she couldn't work because Patrick is deaf and needed extra care. 
So it, I wasn't alone. Mm. You know, I think if I had come here alone. Different story. Li lived in a, shared a flat with somebody like everybody does, you know. Maybe I, I could have succeeded more, but coming with wife, kid, having all that expense, you know, it's for her transport, supermarket, things for pa for the kid, mm. rent, uh, bills, what have you. You need a lot of money. It's a lot easier for, you know, Roger and two other guys. Oh, let's yeah. let's rent a flat. The three of us can split the flat, and uh, it's easier on everybody. There's no expenses. No yeah, nothing. the bum themselves. They they spend the whole day in the gym. They eat whatever. I couldn't do that. Mm. So it became very very difficult, and um, so in 2002, I said. Yeah, not for me. That's when Steve Fine and Kay Mariso, don't go. I have this. I bought this building in Kensal Road. Let's make a gym there. I said, Steve, I got nothing. Got no more energy. Let, let Roger do this. I said, all right, but you'll still be coming. Yeah, I'll come every time. All, always. Roger was not Roger yet. Was he inserting tournaments at that point? Is what he, people forget that Roger has ten world titles. Yeah, but that was the, that was the the black belt. Yeah, before the black belt, he was world champion on blue, world champion on purple, brown, Bur world champion on brown, weight and absolute. Yeah, that was four four titles before the actual ten. Yeah, so that would have been. 14 world titles. So it's not like Roger was here as a blue belt and was any odd blue belt. World champion blue belt. He, he was a world champion blue belt. It was yeah. just a, a blue belt and then a purple belt and then a brown belt. But uh, in 2002, he was already, I think he was already a brown belt or nearly a brown belt or got the brown belt. No, 2002, he was a brown belt al already. Yeah. That's when he had that fight with Jacare. Uh, the, on the absolute uh, of the final, uh, absolute brown belt. Yeah. Was him and Jacare the first time they fought. And Roger had a beautiful win. Jacare was going to get his black belt that day, and the guy, his teacher said, no, no more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Next year, man. <laughs> <laughs> next year. <laughs> <laughs> it's more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Better luck next year. <laughs> yeah, that was in 2002. Yeah. And I remember that very, very well, because in 2003, Roger fought his first ADCC. And for him to be invited to the ADCC, he had to be a black belt. So he was already training in 2002 with Enzo in New York. Yeah. No gi, a lot, for this. And then Enzo called Kali and said, Kali, we got to <coughs> give him the black belt, otherwise he won't be invited. Yeah. So, but he was already in, in, in a different level. So they gave him the black get it, belt. Get into they, that microphone. They gave him the black belt in, <laughs> in two. In 2002. Like a hostage video. <laughs> <laughs> Speak into the mic. Speak 2003. The mic. Between 2002 and 2003. Yeah. And that's when it all started. Roger opening his gym in January. Him and Steve building toilets and putting mats down and yeah. putting planks of wood on the floor. We couldn't afford the, the whole place, so we shared it with a kickboxing guy and a boxer yeah so as soon as you walked in there was a room where clay had his boxing gym walked a little further down the corridor there was this massive room and we had to share with the kickboxing guy that had, had a, a ring yeah and our mats were the rest eventually we got rid of that the number started increasing increasing yeah roger started to win People started to look for us. And <laughs> funny thing is that you could walk all day on that street and you would never find us. Yeah. Because. It's a little blue building, yeah? No. It was, it was a not. little blue door. 
That was that blue the, door. Yeah, the, the the building was a common, just a normal building. You would look at it. There's nothing there. Yeah, just the number twenty three on a on a little blue door. Right. Look for the blue door, because people would pass. So what the fuck? Is I can't this? find your gym. <laughs> It's impossible. We're, we're right there. <laughs> You're not looking properly. <laughs> anyway, in 2002, they built a gym. Uh, in the end of 2002, built a gym. They opened up in 2003. And a little bit after the opening, Roger went to New York to train uh, more no-gi to do his first ADCC where he came in second. He lost his final fight to a guy called John Olive, which they fought again in 2007 and Roger won. The guy was an excellent fighter. Mm. He had really long legs. He got Roger in a body triangle and Roger showed a little bit to get out. And I think he won by an advantage or something like that. He kept on doing it again. Roger got out, but he, he got it again. And that was it. And Roger could not do the absolute that year. Hmm. Why? Why couldn't he do the absolute? Injury or something. We'll leave it uh, at that. Okay. Because I'm have to name names and it's uh, gonna be tricky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's leave it there. Why do you think Roger was winning so much when he was like a blue, purple, brown belt, black belt? He just trained hard. He just trained hard. He, yeah, someone has. Roger to. came. Roger ha was very. Roger and everybody that came from that, Gracie Baja. We say Gracie Baja nowadays, and people mm. refer to, oh, a little gym. Everything tidy and there's a thing online and but the great the how it started it was in a gym in Baja and man you entered that gym you came out on the other side an uh, actual fighter yeah it was, yeah. A it was a tough gym oh yeah the best in Rio no gym better than that. There were like 50 black belts in the morning training. It was insane. Yeah. Everybody better than the next one. World world fighters, world titles, world champions. Everybody was there. Everybody was there. So if, you, if you're raised in an environment like that and you've trained with people on such a high level not throughout your whole, all of your belts, when you, you you get good. You get pretty good. You get good. You yeah. get good in, in not being hammered. Yeah. That's the first thing, right? <laughs> and Because you you're getting smashed all the time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then that starts to spin around. I, now I'm not only not being smashed, but I'm starting to smash. First, you start with your defense. Mm. You don't start with your attack. No? Mm. Got to defend. You got to know how to defend <coughs> yourself. You got to know how to react, how to do this, how to position that. Okay, now I can reverse the game and do whatever I want. Mm. So I think, Rod, yeah. in Roger's case, it was just huh. hardcore training every single day. Yeah. Okay. They, uh, uh, <laughs> That'll yeah. do it then. Yeah. No easy rounds, basically. No. Yeah, he had no easy rounds no. from a child no. until adult, and then no, what? no, yeah. <laughs> no. That and makes there sense. Were like, there yeah. were the other. It's not like oh, he's a Gracie. Let's, let's. Uh, no, there's a Gracie there. Yeah, where? Go get him. Pitchforks. They want to. They they want to have a go. Yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. It's like when I started here. Yeah. And I had to do so many seminars up north. You taught for four hours, yeah. and in the end, you had to spar yeah, yeah. with everybody that was there. Everyone. Everybody. Yeah, that's exactly you had to prove to them that the what right you did was good. Yeah. And you had to make them tap. Yeah. You can't just spar. 
Well, let's have a little go. Fuck that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no. You swear. No. <laughs> you train. You make them tap. Next one. <laughs> and then you see that guy going to the end of the line, the back at the end of the queue said, Boha, we're going to stay here all day. <laughs> <laughs> Boha. <laughs> all right. I'm going to break that guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's not coming back here again. Boof. <laughs> Lost Ow. <laughs> Ow. Ooh, that hurt. Break their wrist yeah, today. Go back. <laughs> ah, not today anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. So you do King of the Hill. You'd stay, yeah, on, in the, stay on in the middle and just each person you yeah. stop, you just they move on. That's Luckily, a good strategy. Luckily, when Roger got his blue belt and he was tough already, sometimes we got bigger numbers like 18. Yeah. Roger, now it's your turn. <laughs> King of the Hill. He had to spar with everyone. Yeah. Every single one. <laughs> good fun, though. <laughs> Make them tap. You didn't tap? Yeah. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go <laughs> <Gotta> tap. <laughs> <laughs> Have to suffer before you leave. <laughs> so 2003, when he opened his gym, Roger was 22. 22. 22. He's from 81. Yeah. 22 years old, he opened his gym. And he started there on his journey. And here we are, 20 nice. years later. You had a 20th anniversary this weekend. We did, and it was amazing. Shame awesome. you couldn't make it. I wasn't there. Sh sh I wasn't there. Shameful. Me? I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't. I was away. Shameful. You should have been there. I should have been there. Your back must have been. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> he didn't go. Yeah, yeah. That will not be forgotten. Yeah. I, uh, just don't grade him. De de delayed, just don't grade him. Don't give him hey. another, don't give him another Dan. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> more, no more Dan's. No more, don't no more, no more purple belt Dan. Dan's. <laughs> No more tape. Take at least another four years to get a brown. <laughs> at least. Hard training. <laughs> did, did you ever do any nogi? I was asking that this morning. Yeah? I was asking about nogi this yeah. morning. What are your thoughts? Here we go. Here we go. You do realize I was a Brazilian wrestling champion. Really? Nice. Yeah. Wrestling. 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 Folk star. How old were you when you started jet jiu jitsu? I was five. Five. Five years old. There's pictures here, but there's no internet. Yeah. Uh, I'll show <coughs> you some. Yeah, let's get them up after. With those awful clothes. Clo I hated those clothes. <laughs> <laughs> the leotard. Yeah, um, the leotard. <laughs> I hated that. The rest of there, the There's a picture of. Of the group, here he comes. <laughs> here he comes. You should just hold the mic like next wait, time. Wait, yeah, follow him around. Hold God. it on a stick. There's a picture that shows us. Here he comes. We all have our, our gold medals. I'm my hands like that, angry as hell. And the guy said, "We're gonna take the picture now." I looked the other way. <laughs> I'm the, I'm the only one not looking at the camera. I'm looking that way. <laughs> I refuse to look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking man, no face, no case. No face, no case. <laughs> eh? No, no face, face, no case. case. Boy, <laughs> hated that man. Yeah. My first fight as a <laughs> that was really funny. My first fight as a in in the wrestling thing. <laughs> there was a massive guy in front of me. I said, "Boy, I'm not gonna try to take this guy down." So I pulled guard. <laughs> Wait, in a wrestling match? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm getting ready to start. The ref look, crosses his arms, looks at me. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> You're disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him, I'm really angry. He said, what the hell? I'm just getting started here. <laughs> no. You can't put your back on the floor. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> and you stood back up? Or you just got out of the No, I left. What am I, embarrassed? <laughs> and I still got told off by my instructor. You stupid idiot. Why'd you do that? <clears throat> I forgot, boy. I had to, I, you're too big, I was gonna pull guard and sweep. <laughs> Good but, tactic for a wrestling tournament. <laughs> but we, 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 <laughs> 
it was funny our our venture into the wrestling world because they the wrestlers didn't like us very much because we were winning everything and we we were winning them with jiu jitsu right <laughs> we 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 knew what to do and they knew as well but we were better but anyway so they had this brazilian championship right so there were teams there from all over Brazil. I'm not going to name names again. But, and then they were literally robbing us from our fights. Literally, but you made the point. He wouldn't give you the point. And on the arm raise in the end, he would raise the other guy's arm. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that was absurd. It was unbelievable what they were doing. My friend... Masha, was, he was gonna, he lifted the other guy's arm. <laughs> he said, what the fuck? Well, what? No, oh, come on, man, you can't do that. Referee's decision. So one of our guys went to the, went to the president. <clears throat> they had a table with the president. And I, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And the president of the federation stood up. <laughs> Boom! He got the first one. He got a smack in the middle of the face that he rolled over the table and went over the chairs and fell on the ground. Oh, man. <laughs> After that. Get into that microphone. Come on. Get oh, <laughs> you and the goddamn microphone. <laughs> Oh, after that, man, it was basically... Wait, so he punched him. The president the president hit the, the, nah, the guy. The president got punched. president got punched. Oh, he the president got... president stood up. Bam. <clears throat> Boof, in the middle of the face. He stood he, up too quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he had a bit of a... An accident. I know that, man, the championship ended there. And... Big brawl. N no, they all ran. That was it. They were all they out. They ran. Everybody ran. So we were left with nothing. So we just... Broke everything we could. <laughs> <laughs> Smash the roof. Smash the <laughs> trophies, me medals, so and logical conclusion. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> All right, that's Nobody just breaking it. it. Spoils of war. All right, <laughs> you're not gonna use these things again. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Destroying scales and just like random bits of paper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> why not? Yeah. Yeah, Finish them off. For some reason, we were never invited there again. That's a shame. Yeah. Is that how you became the wrestling champion? Eh? Is that how you... <laughs> no, 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 that was before. That was before that day. That was funny. Yeah. What a Good time. Days. Yeah. How hard did you used to train growing up, jiu-jitsu-wise? When I was uh, early teens, not much. Not much at all. Bits and pieces. Yeah. Yeah. I was always in the gym. Always going. Yeah. That I always went. Tr you always trained, but not... Yeah, particularly hard. I started really, really hard, probably in my late teens. Then I started harder and harder and harder and didn't stop. When I stopped, I lie. When my teacher died, I stopped a bit. You know when you can't, you don't find, you, you don't fit in, in other gyms. Yeah. You know, you can't find a place where you feel comfortable or that you're gonna fit and you're gonna relax and you're gonna be a member. And I just couldn't find it, man. I went to several gyms, again, not gonna say their names, but I didn't like it at all. Didn't like them at all. Didn't feel comfortable. And once you had a, an instructor like Halls, man, my first instructor was Jean Bert Bahit, still alive to this day. Wow. Came to see a lesson that I gave when I went to Brazil a couple of months ago. No way. Yeah, he's 86 years old. Wow. And he was there watching my entire class, him and his brother. They're way red belts, high. Yeah, yeah. Like they were direct lineage from Eddie Gracie. They were teachers at Eddie's Academy. Wow. Yeah. So, and it was very rewarding having him there watching my class. It was really nice. Wow. And he was one of your first teachers? He was one of my first teachers. Wow. Yeah, he was my dad's teacher. Yeah. He was uh, the best fighter of the Gracie Academy from Edu's side. It was him and Carson. 
So uh, my dad was, they were really close friends. Mm. So my dad used to go to the gym every Saturday and I used to go with my father. Then I started going alone <coughs> when I learned how to get buses and stuff like that. Then I started training there, but he closed his gym in 1977. He became a sports therapist, like a, uh, not therapist. Um, he would, uh, he would be the the guy that football players would talk to if they have problems. He worked for, for he started working with football, like sports psychology kind of thing. Sports psychology, right, right. That's uh, me mental like coaching. Yes, got it. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very intelligent man. Yeah, yeah. Looks. <coughs> yeah, I still see him. You still see him. Yeah. Would you have open mats in that back in the day? Or is that like a new concept? Um, no. Like, would there be much like inter club training, or was it club if you were club from, rivalries? If you were from another club and you visit our club, unless somebody took you there, you would. People beat the shit out of you. Yeah. Unless you were really good and they weren't better than us. Mm. They weren't better than us. Yeah. Those halls, halls of school, yeah? The halls and cars, Carson, yeah. Yeah. We were the, the best schools there was. Why, what do you think made you guys the best? Because we trained really hard. Hard training. And we had the best teachers. Boom. Had the best teachers. Halls was the best teacher I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Yeah, and sparred with us all the time. You know, I see Roger doing the same thing. Roger has been becoming a very highly qualified instructor thing that took a while because not always you're a good fighter and a good instructor. And you might not be both, but he became a really interesting person to learn from. And um, yeah, what yeah. made Holes such a good coach? Do you think? I think he was first. What what first makes a person good in what he does is that you love what you do. Yeah. Right. So if you love what you do, Roger uh, Holes loved what he did loved teaching us, loved seeing our progress and watching us, uh, you know, compete and win and and f j just fight, compete and fight. And he was a guy like that, you know, he liked to compete, he liked adventures. That's why he had such a sudden death. He liked to put himself on the, on the extreme always, you know. And he would push us to that too. Let's fight. Let's fight wrestling. Let's fight Gregor Rogan. Yeah. Let's see how we do. You know. Push you guys to he compete went, a lot as well. He went to Sambo in America. Yeah. And won first place. Never fought Sambo in his life. He's like, fuck it, let's try. <laughs> He's like, fuck it, let's just go try. Yeah. Yeah. He had offers to live in America and win sh loads of money, but he never did. Stayed in Brazil, stayed with us. Maybe that would have changed later on in life. Who knows? Mm. He went too soon. But, yeah, we were about to open the new gym. I was going to work with him. Me and two other guys. We did the instructor course, and we were training at night as well. And, yeah, that was it. That was the end of an era. Would you say Rolls was one of the most technical guys? And that's why he teaches better. Um, what makes a good teacher? No? It's, yeah. it's several things. You can't, oh, he's very technical. He's going to be a good teacher. But he's that, like personable as well as technical I and open-minded. 
I think overall, first of all, he loved what he did. Secondly, he was extremely good at it. Yeah. To the top, people would come to him for information. So it was easy for him to pass on. For example, he would teach us a technique, right? And we were tough. We weren't kids. And he would teach us technique. And he would, now go to the wall. Now I'm going to get all of you in this same position. And we were, mm, no, he's not. He's not going to do it. We, yeah. know, we know what he wants. And he would get every single one of us. In that position. Yeah. <laughs> and that would be with everything. Sometimes in the end of the day, man, I, I shit you not, he asked us to hold him on the floor. Get on that microphone. Oh, <laughs> boy. <laughs> Bring it down with you. <laughs> <laughs> he would, we would hold him belly up this far from the ground. Yeah. Let go. He would turn before he fell. Wait, what? Like a cat. Like a cat. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send that to you now. Let's <laughs> 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 get Christian on the phone. <laughs> Man, funny. funny. <laughs> Holding him by the gi. Three, two, one. No, no. Two. Feet? Feet. Oh. Arms. Let go. Boom. You were tired. Impressive. Key. Impressive. Like a cat. Yeah. Avoid he the opponent. He was very flexible. Very. He wasn't very big. Yeah. His wrist was like a... Good animal. grips. Chunky. Chunky hands. Yeah. The slap from him was... Not easy, man. Good grips. Four, huh? And, um, yeah, it was quick. Could be two, three guys quickly. Mm. Easy. You have a train with slaps. Yeah, we used to do. Fell like judo. Huh? Fell like judo, no? Judo? Fell like judo. Is it fell like judo? Valitudo. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's different. That's like MMA. No, it's not valitudo. Valitudo means anything goes. Oh, okay. Valitudo is the today MMA. So the slaps was a thing called taparia. Taparia. That was only open hand slaps. But we never really liked that much. What we did was every Friday put, put uh, boxing gloves in, in one and the, he would he could hit you as much as he could. You had to clinch, hold the distance, and take him down to get that fear off you, the person that of somebody striking and yeah, yeah. you know you clinch and get him, get clinch and get down. You get smacked a few times, but so what? Yeah, you're in the gym. That's why you're there for. Yeah, exactly. Right? But top idea. Yeah, the, I, I knew I knew some guys that loved to do that. I always hated it because have you ever done it? Uh, a, there's nothing worse than getting slapped. It's That's my opinion. Your <laughs> <It's> body <laughs> full of yeah. slaps. You're on the side, yeah. on the back, or if you get oh, one on big, the face. big uh, fat smack in the face, <laughs> now you want to kill the, the guy. anger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just punch oh. me. You oh, come on, man. Like, yeah. No, just, I don't like that at all. Just punch me. I know uh, there's a friend of mine that does that in, in Rio. That uh, top idea class. Jesus Christ, man. No. Yeah. That's not for me. Yeah, it's called combat jiu-jitsu now, isn't it? Oh, is it? Well, yeah, they do combat jiu-jitsu now, and it's just slaps. <laughs> Have you seen it? No. People get KO'd. People get KO'd with palm yeah, strikes. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's the Eddie Bravo uh, invitational thing. He calls it combat jiu-jitsu. As long as it's open hand, anything got like you down. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Easy people get around. KO'd and stuff. So of it. he doesn't do his uh, submission grappling anymore. He no, does he it does. as well. Is, yeah, both. Is it his? I didn't realize that was his combat jiu-jitsu. Combat Jiu Jitsu is also Eddie Roberts, Eddie Brother, yeah. 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 And he's got the Ebi Eddie so Brother invitation. With, with slaps. Open strike. Yeah. Hands. Only on the floor. <laughs> oh, you can only slap on the floor. If one of them is grounded, yeah, because otherwise it'd just be like stand up with slaps. Yeah. <laughs> it'd just be so shit. <laughs> yeah. Have, you, yeah. Seen, have yeah. you seen Power Slap, Mauricio? Huh? Have you seen Power Slap? 
the guys that are in front of each other and they yeah. slap each other with the ch yeah they hold the thing that's up. insane <laughs> yeah i saw it the other day uh, so I, 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 I watch it once in a while it comes on your feet on youtube yeah, yeah. oh god <laughs> my god man what happens to those ears yeah it, if it had brain cells you just mm. get you're just openly just getting knocked out it's such a high chance to get just getting yeah. completely knocked out man because it's right here that Ooh, yeah. and they're strong and they generate like strength from you know That's they're so not much they're swinging, just standing or, hands behind yeah. your back going slapping sometimes the hand goes a little bit like that and when it goes <laughs> boof <laughs> <laughs> and boof sometimes the guy falls down say, god damn it man you, yeah. I wonder if they make a lot of money in that because no no, I doubt it. I really because <laughs> man, the consequences. Could you name yes, one single power slap I, champion? I don't know. I yeah. don't know any. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> because man, the, 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 that's damaging, is it? Isn't for it? no reason, yeah, for no reason. Because you just stare. You're there standing there going, come oh, on, slap glory. me. Slap me. I'm, I'm, I'm a tough guy. Slap me away. Who goes first? That's what I want to know. Whoever goes first wins. I think. Yeah, really. I've yeah. seen some clips. I mean, not watching a lot of it, but I've been trying to be like, who lasts? I'm obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> who lasts the first round? Sometimes when you, when you see someone slap someone and it just goes like ricochets off their face, mm -hmm. the disappointment in the, in the guy yeah. who's done the slap is like, Oh, oh yeah. fuck! And then you know he's gonna get knocked down. There. It's, not, it's not too late <laughs> to know. give up as he's well either. So that's <laughs> why you're willingly doing this. Yeah, for another chance. For another, yeah, <laughs> fucking savage. Yeah, very stringent rules though. Huh? I, I saw one where no, some guy no slapped someone, and they said <clears throat> like they used too much talk. I seen that. Yeah, because yeah. the guy went. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it was in a punch no one. He like, yeah, yeah, he essentially yeah. punched him in the face. Just <laughs> yeah. Then he was like, yeah. Fuck yeah! yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you, you no. That's you, that's a cheating. Foul. Yeah, that's a penalty. <laughs> that's a penalty. That's a penalty. That's a penalty. Yeah. You pivoted. Oh, okay. yeah. You're allowed to pivot. Yeah, you don't think you're allowed to slap behind the ear and all that kind of stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can't. Not here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right here, where the ear, ear can be mostly damaged. Yeah. Anyway, that's slap that's in the eye. That's enough airtime uh, for I, power I, slaps. I don't yeah. understand that. <laughs> why the hell do that? People yeah. are stupid. Anyway, I guess probably like a quick two grand. Yeah, yeah, quick money, get slapped maybe, in the face. they're addicts and they just want two grand. They're addicts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Junkies. Yeah, exactly. It's two yeah, grand. Let's go. Yeah. Did you compete in jiu-jitsu much back in the days? Yeah, as much as I could. You enjoyed that? Yeah. Nice. There weren't that many competitions. Not, not like Not back in, yeah, yeah. And after Halls died, I only entered two more. Hmm. Until he was alive, yeah. Because he was pushing you guys. Yeah. Go, 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 yeah, go. We were always getting ready for the next one. But sometimes there weren't that many that year. So there were more the year. The next year would be more. Mm. And um, yeah, I, I, anything I could lay my hands on, I, I would fight. But he died in 82. 81. November 81 was my last fight under his eyes that's when I got my black belt and um, actually it's the only fight you can it's on YouTube somewhere and um, yeah a few months later he, he passed away mm. then I competed again I think in 84 just to prove a point. Did you prove the point? I did. I, I won the fight in th 18 seconds. <laughs> That's pretty great. Eh? Well, how did you win? Armbar. Armbar. I had a very tricky armbar from standing that worked really well. From standing? Nice. Yeah. Flying armbar. No, not flying armbar. It's a proper armbar. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a proper armbar. But uh, I won two fights like that. Wow. One in 18 seconds, the other one in 35 seconds. What armbar is it? Is it the overhook one? It's difficult to explain. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm facing Charles, yeah. I'm going to get that arm. 
but I'm going to put my foot on his hip or knee on this side. Yeah. I'm going to push my hip that way. Yeah. I'm going to pass my leg over his neck. Okay, I get you. But I'm not going to hook my leg. Just your shin eh? in front of his face. Come on, let's see. Yeah. Let's see it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I like this, I get you. Uh, <laughs> see? Tap him, tap him out. Eh? Take the, finish it. Him. Finish, it. Finish, <laughs> it. finish it. Just like on the would, hip. Would be on that knee. Uh, okay. All right. That's like the old Gracie mag of like photo, exactly. isn't it? Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's there the it one. is, yeah. the originator. Steven Seagal taught you that. I met him. I met him once. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, yeah. I met him in California, in uh, Vegas once. Funny dude. Steven Seagal. <laughs> I'm going to try that one, I'm going to try that. Yeah, there's some, some <laughs> ways of, because uh, the guy has to do that, right? Yeah, it pulls weight for him. He, he, he has to push a little bit, so there's, tricks of making the guy do this yeah and when you see the opportunity you pull and boom. And stomp and throw it over yeah and they don't the have time, time to they, they just yell you. it comes over yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah because it's already on yeah. yeah you're pushing and he's already on i won the guy once get on that mic man honestly oh, okay. you and your mic <laughs> yeah, 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 you get two on. mics i was uh i was uh a brown belt and Halls rented a bus. So he put, you can imagine, he put 36 guys on the bus to go fight in the interior of Sao Paulo, which was, we left our gym around eight, nine o'clock in the morning of a Saturday and traveled at least 12 hours. <laughs> on a bus yeah fuck yeah to get to this place to this city in Sao Paulo to get fuck all these people up the 35 the 36 that went the 35 brought back gold medals they were not happy at all but the thing is the going there the bus driver several times stopped the bus I ain't driving no more <laughs> I ain't taking you guys anywhere. Here are the keys. <laughs> Why was he kicking off? What happened? Just noisy, annoying. Yeah, imagine 36 guys full of testosterone going to, to, a, going to a fight. What a great toxic atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> and we had, everybody was skinned because we were all kids, you know. What's the late, age? What's the age? Late, late teens. Late teens or early 20s. How much stuff did you throw out the windows? Out the window? We yeah, threw yeah. at each other. <laughs> Whoa, papaya <laughs> and watermelon and banana. And water. Watermelon. Oh, man. <laughs> the, the, push the, it out chunk by chunk. <laughs> Boy, the bus didn't make halfway through <laughs> and the, the, the bathroom was already clogged up. <laughs> Imagine yeah. that. And there's yeah. restaurants in, in the, on the road. Yeah. So the bus would stop <laughs> at the restaurant. You would see, literally see people running to close the doors. <laughs> no, no, we're closed. <laughs> you can't come in. You're not coming in here. And Halls would have to try to convince the guy that no. You're no. staying open. You no, they wouldn't open. Really? No. <laughs> no. Why? Yeah. Because you're just going to tear the restaurant up. I thought no, it was broken. I don't think we would. I actually don't. But they were terrified. Man, 36 guys walking towards your establishment. 36 guys. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, oh, oh, ears like that. <laughs> <laughs> People without shirts, flip flops or shorts. Yeah, it's a tropical country. Yeah. Right? So yeah, it's yeah. warm. Yeah. So people have no shirts or... <laughs> I don't want you guys in here. Come on, man. Mm. Get, get, the, get the hell out. We don't want you here. But anyway, we won everything. Yeah. This was uh, <laughs> Sunday morning and then Sunday afternoon. And he put all of us to sleep. Uh, you, you could either sleep uh, on the bus, in his gym, on the mats. But the the higher belts could get a room in the, in the local hotel. So I got a room in the, the local hotel. Nice. So that was a brown belt. 
And I said, Hawes, I want a bed. Come on. I'm not going to sleep in the gym. So he, uh, we got a, I got a bed. <coughs> Me and Mas, the, the older guys got a bed. The other ones, on. You're, you're a kid. You go to the gym. <laughs> anyway. Uh, 12 hours. Fucking hell. Yeah. All the time. All the time. But we fought well. And then we went to the... 30, 35 golds. 35 golds. One silver? One s bronze. Got it. Bronze. He must have been heartbroken. And he must have been pretty yeah, sad. Yeah. The guy was American. <laughs> he wasn't even Brazilian, yeah. Hey. He wasn't even a Brazilian. Yeah. No. Cool. S Scott Convoy. He was <laughs> our dear friend. He was trained with us for many years. But he, I think he got so nervous that he didn't win. Yeah. But he was the only one. And coincidentally, he was American. Funny. <laughs> watermelons off the bus. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> watermelons. <laughs> huh? Throwing watermelons, papaya off the bus. Oh, huh? <laughs> what a delicious fruit as well. <laughs> jelly babies on, on rubber bands and throwing at each other. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's shit. Boah, got in people's eyes. <laughs> Boah, huh? <laughs> the 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 emergency window was removed and we had to they stopped and we had to put it back again. Boy, it's too hot in here. Open the window. Yeah, you can imagine just fucking around. Boy, imagine the through. state of the bus. Yeah, and then Halls had to convince the driver, please come on. They're not gonna do anything anymore. And then he would uh, guys. Seconds. Come on, boy. He's not gonna come in. How are we gonna get there? We got to go. Blah, blah, blah. And then, oh yeah, yeah, hold, yeah. And that would last like 20 minutes. If so, yeah. you slap the guy waiting. in the head. <laughs> wait, just wait, just <laughs> waiting for him to turn around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was cool, man. It wasn't, I'll never forget that. Anybody that went on that trip <clears throat> will have that in, in a very good memory in his life. It was really interesting. How how do you like Birmingham? <laughs> what, what are your opinions on on Birmingham as a place? Well, I'm from Brazil. Yeah, yeah. The thing yeah. is that I'm from this part of Brazil. Yeah, yeah. And Birmingham is very different to that, right? So looks terrible. Your lights on, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's Charles. <laughs> Charles that. So to leave that and end up on the bull ring. Yeah, it's a bit different. It's slightly different. Mm. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, I I made some friends there, and that's. And all the connections that I made in the Midlands and up north and all of that, when Braulio came into this country, he had nothing. He came to maybe help Roger or whatever. And I said, Roger, put him in Birmingham. And look what he did. Mm. Mm. Cool. Yeah. But nice the, the base was built. I had the connect. I had everything there. Yeah, I even had a gym there. Oh wow! So he you know, he he just went, and he I, he from there he they went to Nottingham. That's where Vito ended up. Now he's not living there anymore. He's in Portugal. Yeah, but uh, uh, he 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 had the 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 Gracie Baja Birmingham. Gracie Baja, Northern Ireland. Gracie Baja, Jersey. That was all. I I was the one that I, I that made all that knew all those people. All they were all my friends. <coughs> they, they still are. Yep. Graham Keys in Northern Ireland is a dear friend of mine. I still go there all the time. Yep. And um, and this was just developed from from that to what you guys have here today. Uh -huh. Yeah. It but started with a seed that was planted in 98. Especially up north, there was no jujitsu anywhere. Mm. There were tough guys to fight. Oh, yeah. That you can find anywhere. Yeah. Especially here. But not especially here, anyway. But it 
was a they I'm not saying that they had it easy, but they already had Yeah, they had a path. A head start. Yeah, yeah. Know. Roger had Steve here that gave him the gym. Browdy had the gym there already with the students. Yeah. And connections everywhere. Nice. So not saying that it's easier, they did a no, of course not. Massively poor. And they became world champions. Yeah. So the UK had two residents here that were world champs. How many times world champions? They used they to train a lot together as well, no? <coughs> <coughs> they used to train a lot together. Yeah. And then came Vito, Brown's mm -hmm. brother, that added even more to the team. Yeah. And they trained. <coughs> with their students, with them, and people that used to come here to train with them. People that heard about Roger started coming here, Jean Saint Pierre. Yeah, it's interesting when Roger was winning a lot of these titles, he didn't have all the a lot of these world champions to train with at the time. No, just, only just when a, he went to to the States. Yeah, but just a, for the most of the time he was in the UK, yeah? So he was training most just with- Most of the time he was trying to run his gym, yeah. With his students practicing moves on the students, practicing his skills. Yeah, he would get five, six, seven good students and train with them. Yeah. In putting himself in very difficult. You don't train normally, no. like slap, tap, and let's have a roll, no. Specifics. Get, get my arm tight. Yeah. Nah, I gotta get out. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but always starting from very, difficult situations to be in and then you got to work your way out that's how you train with the lower belts did you used to train with that like that with uh with rolls as no, well because we had i had people my level got them yeah i didn't we i didn't need that mm. i had people higher level than me for i was just a i just arrived mm. I got there as a white belt. I never received any belts from my previous instructor, Jean Bert. But I was not a normal white belt. I was a white belt that had been training since I was five years old. Yeah. So I got to halls on a Saturday, on a Friday. On Monday, he told me, he said, go to the shop, buy your blue belt, you're gonna fight Saturday for the state championship. Nice. He said, poor halls, I haven't fought I don't even know how long. Did you, you win? What, you hear what I said? You're fighting Saturday. Yes, sir. <laughs> went to the shop. Yes, <laughs> yes sir. <laughs> I went to the shop. <laughs> I, I bought my, my belt. I could start using it the next day. And I, on Saturday, I was state champion weight and absolute. Nice. Yeah. What age were you there? Hmm? What age were you there? <coughs> Teenager, so no. Twenty-two. Ah, okay. And you were a white belt, twenty-two. Blue belt. Oh wow. Oh, okay. But you trained for seventeen years. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. So, so I didn't. Take, uh, okay. okay. I didn't yeah. take long. So you were sandbagging in the blue belt division. <laughs> I, didn't take, I didn't. I didn't take long to go from belt to belt. <laughs> yeah, <no doubt>. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> About next week. <laughs> How many people's ribs have you broken? You could, uh, I got that question as well. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't Too many to count. count it, does, it doesn't. Well, from Neon Betty, is it, it's countless yeah. though. Yeah, yeah. It's tricky because in the end of the day, it's, uh, I'm not breaking any. It's, they're, they're breaking their sound. Yeah, themselves. yeah. They're yeah. moving the wrong way. Yeah, exactly. They move the wrong way, they do a little twitch. Uh, it's not my fault. Yeah. I get well, that. Just Train with Charles. Yeah. This uh, massive uh, human. I don't, yeah. Uh, he tra yeah. I, I he, he trains up. half Muay Thai and half Jiu Jitsu. Oh, <laughs> 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 That's like a rock. He can't even hold, bend his wrist. I would definitely can't. Oh. I would definitely can't. So, uh, yeah, really struggle with Charles. <laughs> use the tools you have. Yeah. Did you not see him training with me yesterday? From Turtle. It was a, it was embarrassing, not embarrassing, but it was I was getting hammered within the first second. We'd go one, two, 
bang and i was you had my back within like three seconds every single time i think the time. same thing happened over and over again it was over and <laughs> over and over and over again yeah i guess that's not my fault though that's no, not my fault it's my fault <laughs> my, my bad <laughs> train enough yeah no no nah. he's back I'm, I'm back into it now you'll see mm. you'll see okay. you'll see let's do some questions all right then it, yeah. let's see all right is it, is it on your phone no, it's your phone. Your I send it to you. All right, let's see what people have uh, people have asked. The fans have requested. Should yeah. I go on the ones you, you you sent me? Let's see. Let's see. All right, I've got to read them though. People asked. Who asked? So we I'll put up on Instagram ones. some questions. Oh, did you? And people like, want to ask some questions. Well, well, I, well that's good. The good oh. ones. What are your thoughts on the new jiu-jitsu game, i.e., leg locks, uh, and all that kind of stuff? People think that we didn't do leg locks or foot locks back in the day. Yes, we did. Yeah. It wasn't. It just wasn't that popular. Yeah. Because we were very, very in that face-to-face -face fight, you know, get getting arms and leg, and people wouldn't give you a chance to go for feet and legs because they were always holding on to you. Yeah. So it's not like. Uh, when you take the gi off, then yeah, footlocks will go all over the place. Yeah, but it's not. People talk about this like this never ever happened before. Yeah, like it's, it's not thing. true. Just cycles, isn't this, it? This always been there. Yeah, maybe not as much, you know, not as as focused yeah. on exclusively that in spinning under the people wouldn't. Because you have to understand that jiu-jitsu back in the day was a lot more focused on self-defense position. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you went to the jiu-jitsu academy to learn how to fight, to learn yeah. how to defend yourself. Yeah. So Grand that did not help. include much in you yeah. know spinning around on the floor and, yeah, and exactly, trying yeah. to get somebody's leg. <laughs> yeah. Because you would have somebody else on top of you Hammer fist. punching the hell, the hell out of <laughs> Hammer you. Hammer fist. So yeah. it's not like how people... It works on street fighting too. Yeah, it does. Yeah. If you can get the right moment. <coughs> yeah. Sure. Mm. Anything works. Yeah. Right? A blow in the wrong direction works. <laughs> Any, anything can work. So these things, they, they've they always been there. Maybe not so intense. And there are cycles. You'll see things come and go a lot yeah. in Jiu Jitsu. Believe me, I'm, I've been in this business yeah. long enough to see things come and go. Yeah, I guess Imanari was doing leg locks ages ago as well. Yeah, and he's, he's the other guy. Re can't remember his name. There's another guy who's doing a lot of leg locks in Pride. Dean Lister. Yeah, they were. Uh, uh, Japanese Sambo. guy. Sambo, the the the, the Russian fight. Well, it's yeah. all about foot locks and leg yeah. locks. Yeah. They don't even use the, the bottom part of the geese. Go fight with those guys. They're quick as hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah those takedowns. Just are injury they're, they're season. Amazing. Injury season. Boy, they're amazing fighters. Yeah. yeah. Boy. So the, all the combination of these fights is extremely nice. Mm. I just think jiu-jitsu is, is more complete than yeah. any other else. Fewer rules in jiu-jitsu. Yeah. That's basically, all right, cool. Okay, let's continue. Let's see what else. Someone called you Master Mauricio here. Oh, God. Yeah, there's, there's Master Mauricio. <laughs> Professor yeah. Mauricio. Just stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Master uh, Damn, some of these questions I just don't want to... Why are they personal? No, they're, they're not personal, but they're just a bit like... <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll, I'll read one just to, just to get you going, and then, and then, yeah. How did you get into BJJ? How did I get into BJJ? My yeah. dad loved it. My dad only talked about BJJ, about Carson's fights, Eddie's fights, took me to the gym when he used to go, so... Yeah, that's it then. That's how, there that's how I got into enough. BJJ. It there was, you go. It was <laughs> instructed. All right, cool. What? So uh, someone asked Roger Gracie this. What is the most uh, dominant position in BJJ? Oh, yeah, that's the Lex Freeman. Um, yeah, what would you mount. Would you say mount as mount. well? And he said Le mount. Lex was arguing. Lex was saying back. Yeah, yeah. I think back. he meant back, but you're on top of them. Like they're face oh, down. Oh, they're face flat. down. Yeah. 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 Mount. There's no more dominant position than me sitting on your chest is it i don't think so it's because people well what if what if you're face what if you're face down you've got two hooks in 
and you're you've got them belly down that's what this was you're yeah. belly down I, i'm top. belly down you're on top you've got hooks in flattening me out yeah it's also mount though isn't it that's back mount yeah, yeah same same back mount with your back flat on the it's, floor you're it's in mount, trouble. Yeah. That, yeah big yeah. time big time but that's yeah. back mount yeah yeah still mount. i think these two are the most dominant positions and they are the hardest ones to ma to maintain yeah that's why they're so good because yeah. once you get it and once you actually know what to do with it your your opponent is in trouble yeah have you ever seen an mma fight with somebody sitting on top of the other one pounding away yeah it's what not what the bottom guy's gonna do brutal boy he has to turn around yeah that's where all the major bjj fight uh, bjj against other martial artists won their fights in the get, beginning especially in the beginning get when they to the mount know what to do beat the shit out take of the, the ground, guy pound. down mount punch 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 the guy turns choke finish the fight did you ever see john jones in the mount back in his early early days mm, no, don't oh, remember. elbows man he, elbows. Was, the, he was the worst yeah. he would because he's so long he would get so much leverage and just smash him <laughs> down people would be guarding and it just go straight for the garden like yeah. smash their face we wow. had uh he was Nelson, uh, uh, rogers one of Roger's uncles. He was really good at that as well. Mostly on the beach. Uh, just picking fights on the beach. Eh? Picking fights on the beach. No, he didn't play fight on the beach. People fight, just fighting had on the beach. Them. Surfers in general. Yeah. Getting uh, the other guy's way. You know, you the gun on the way. Somebody drops on your back. Come on, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. So they go to the... To the settle settle it on the, the sand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they would fight. That was every day. Yeah, and he was really good at that. That was Helson. Get to the mount, beat the shit mount. out of him. No, hand and elbow, hand and elbow, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Was, that's such a good time. Open the guy up, rough him all up. up, go home. <laughs> was that such fun? <laughs> Just be surfing and then like Surf, <laughs> sparring fine. and then surfing? go back to your surfing. Fine. Doing some acai, right? Okay, how has your game evolved with age? What changes did you make? Did you consciously plan your game so that as you get older? you would be effective and be able to train without being too injured, for example. Um, is, is that a question how I did it or how people should do it? Because there's a difference. Let's go the question that. was on, on <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's go how, how did you, you did it and then oh, what I did it. Let's I, fucked yeah. my, I, I fucked myself up. You're injured, yeah. I, I kept going too hard uh, without respecting my age and now I'm injured. Uh, I have a shoulder injury that is bothering me a lot. And um, I th there's a lot of things that I stopped doing and um, that helped me very, very much. But the main thing that sometimes people don't understand is that you get older, so you, you tend, you, you can you you can stretch all you want you can do whatever you want but your your speed and your strength they decrease yeah so if i'm training with somebody if i want to train with you guys for example i cannot in any way try to exchange strength with you guys in, in like power of movement on top of you guys. <laughs> it's yeah. just ridiculous. Yeah. It's, it's not gonna happen. So I gotta you gotta be smart and learn to give up certain situations. Mm. Because we know our, our way around, right? I know very well how to defend a lot of situations. So even if I get in a bad spot, it's the game's not over until until it's over. Yeah. So I can, you know, play around and still, obviously with people my age, it's different. It's because there's not that many people my age training to this day. I would have to go to Brazil and try to find, or go to a gym where my friends are yeah. and train with some of them because mostly they're around the world with their own gyms or what have you. Yeah. And um, it's difficult to, to find people to train, you know, uh, that won't hurt you because yeah. it's not that you guys train with me uh, in a in a harsh manner. It's not it. It's uh, without even noticing. Sometimes I might get caught in a situation 
where I will hurt myself. Oh, I'm not gonna give this this in. I'm not I'm not gonna give in. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. That went. And then you gotta go home and ice it and then you can't train the next day. Got it. And I gotta I gotta make a living. I gotta work. Yeah. So <laughs> It's choices you make. So I, I, I learned I learned a, a a bit to spar and to train with guys without exposing myself as much and not a learning learning to give up a lot of situation. Let him have it. Guard, for example. Yeah. Sometimes you're still in an extreme situation. Oh God damn it! Let him have it. Get side control. <laughs> get, get your side control. Yeah, leave my legs alone. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you stay there, work your way out, or yeah. not. It, you learn not to be so uh, a little more hum humble. Yeah. You know, you learn. Yeah. Not as competitive. Yeah. 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 He's, 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 he's getting better than me. Let him have I was position. training with a guy the other day. And I got tired in the end of five minutes, and he was just looking at me and said, "How old are you?" And the guy was one th one third of my age. Really? He was twenty two. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm sixty eight. He was twenty two. He was getting exhausted. Hey. He was getting exhausted. You were getting yeah, both exhausted. Both of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He couldn't do much because I used my weight very well. Yeah. And um, and he wasn't a, a high belt. Yeah. It was just a kid, but. Just to show that, you know, you can try yeah. to do certain things, but... You just shut him down, it, be heavy on him. Yeah, just not allowing them to get so far, all right? You can come, 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 wait a minute, no, no, not here. Yeah. And then you manage to get a foot out, protect yourself a little bit. Yeah. And hang, they hang in there for the end of the game. What sort of games do you like to play when you're playing guard? Card. Guards. Oh, like, guard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Like to do uh, underhooks and that sort of stuff. No, I have a very good close guard. I still ah, yeah, do. yeah, yeah, yeah. I that's still it. do. Yeah, that's and a good one. Then if you if 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 you're less mobile or people are too explosive, then close guard's pretty good for that. Yeah, they're just stuck. Yeah, I can still hold my own. With yeah, my, with my guard close, it's when it's open. Yeah, that I have less to hold on to. Yeah, it starts to play games with your lower back and stuff because your legs are always high. You know. Absolutely. So you, yeah. you tend to 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 lower the legs a bit, and play like a sitting guard or whatever, not allowing them to hold your legs so much. Yeah. Or just try to stand up. Yeah. Or just roll onto my fours and wait for the next move. Yeah. They're gonna <laughs> go, come attack, <laughs> attack my back, and then, then you might flip. You them might over reverse it. Yeah. Nice. Reverse and get side control or what have you. Nice. Whatever. Yeah. These doesn't are. make much difference, as long as you're having fun. While yeah. you're training, True. that's the main thing. I think so. You know, the last thing you want is a 68-year-old guy walking in that class, and not even the competition class that, that you guys do. Yeah. But in a normal class, that one o'clock class or the 12 o'clock class, and have a little roll with somebody, have a little bit of fun. Yeah. You know, have a roll, have a two rolls or three rolls. Thanks, man. That's that's good. Yeah. That's all I want. Amazing. That's all you want. Yeah. That's all you want. You go home feeling great. Yeah. Man, yeah. I did a little bit today. Amazing. That that's. You Go Thank back you. tomorrow, yeah. do the Thank same. Thank you, Lord. Nice. I guess that's, there's, yeah, that, pro that's probably not many people your age that train, are there? No way. Um, these, like, probably the person writing in is, is closer to, like, 35. And I, it's see, hard. I, see, I see people in in my country, my age, still training. A, a lot. Here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's chasing me. The police. This thing all, all morning, Go all heads. afternoon. <laughs> Go uh, th why don't we see that here or, or in other countries because yeah. jiu-jitsu as you well know we, <clears throat> we put our bodies in all sorts of weird positions mm. and situations yeah yeah so and that's what you do with the beginners the beginners class the guy that just walked to your door his body never did what we do. Never, yeah. He has, he has no, right? Yeah. He never had anybody sitting on his belly and trying to choke him. There's no exposure to that. Oh, so for him, 
you can see when they're trying to do a front roll or, or a back roll. They, they just roll. They, they don't know what they're doing. So they got to go through all that process first to allow their body to get used to doing the other moves mm. so they don't get hurt. Otherwise, in my days, there was a new student that would point them on the dog, guys, fresh meat, <laughs> <laughs> go in. <laughs> if, 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 prison, if you prison, if, if, if you come, la- come on, <laughs> if you lasted, yeah, that's why Roger told me once you'll never have more than 20 students, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did. I had 22. It's just to beat people up. We so were, like, that's we, that's how you learn. Yeah. I had a group, we anybody that walked through the door, we'd cream. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fresh meat, he doesn't know anything. <laughs> Beat him up till he came back. The guy had to crawl out the door. <laughs> oh, God. If he came back the next with bruises all over the face or what have you, then we started to get a bill. Guys, come on, we need more students. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's go eat. Go a little easier on at least some of them. If you don't like the guy, it's different. Yeah. But anyway, things started to sparkle a little, a little bit more. And the, 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 we started all of this and I keep deviating, it's Charles's fault. Anyway, the, what I was saying about Brazil is that the guys my age have been doing this as long as I have. Yeah. So our bodies is used to. They used to. So it's used to, it's very easy for me to train with Zebelieza, with Pichotin, with guys that have been around me my whole life you know, or, or a little bit younger that... Yeah, you're like 60 years experience doing them. Yeah, so, you know, these guys have been training as much as I have. So we can do a nice roll with each other without going nuts, obviously we always do, but at least not go completely crazy, yeah. you know, and have a little roll and, okay, that's good for today. Nice. We'll, we'll be back tomorrow. It's easier for me to do that in my country than it is here, yeah. unless I get some business. So, yeah, some some guys a little bit older. Did we had a group in the gym stopped uh, during lockdown and we never got together again. It was a nice group. It was a old man's Wednesday group. Oh yeah. We got together every Wednesday at eleven o'clock, and we trained till twelve, twelve thirty. Nice. Yeah, you were not invited. It would be, have to be over 50. Before lockdown, yeah, I was like 20, 26, yeah. 25, yeah. Yeah. It was just for, it was me, Steve, Darren, Dave. Kevin Capel, Kevin Chan, uh, maybe some Mark Barton, uh, all the guys, everybody above 50, 55. And we would get together and train a little bit. We would do more talking than training. Chatting away. Yeah. Fun catch up. Yeah. It yeah. was it was a nice session. It was a, it was not really a session. It was a get together. Nice. And we used to spar, then go out for coffee or what have you. That that was the highlight highlight of my week. Having fun. Yeah, yeah, it was really nice. People that you know for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. And you see them once a week, you know, it's really nice. It's a good point for hobbyists. Like, yeah. if you're a hobbyist, it should just be fun. You should just go and train, fun. Train. Get people your age if if you feel like you're older than everyone and just borrow people your age. Yeah, because yeah. That was you, you have to understand that jiu-jitsu is so much fun. Yeah, yeah. I you love know, it. It's I'm so much day. fun. I'm there every day. <laughs> I really like it's, it. <laughs> it's, it's not only the comp- the com- the competitive side, it's the, yeah. the camaraderie that comes out of all this. Yeah. yeah. You know, the friendships that can make out of all this. You know, even though you're there to try to beat each other up, but you know, you, you finish and you hug each other out and you shake hands and you know, I don't know, it's such a nice feeling that you get. Yeah, 
It's different to other martial arts, like, like yeah, Muay Thai and is. striking sports. It's like, yeah, because, uh, you're actually punching. And they like, punch you in the face for, for an hour, and then do you want to be my friend? Yeah. Uh, don't think so. You go home, you got a headache, you actually feel bad. Oh, when you do one yeah, boxing. Yeah, oh, yeah. God. I yeah. remember when I used to, I did some boxing for a time, and man, there was a headache for the rest of the afternoon. Yeah. Just, boy, this is not good. No. No. Yeah, I noticed that. It's not good, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I noticed that. Did you see your fun? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Let's see. What we got for Master Gomez? Uh, Master Mauricio, sorry. At what point did you think Roger was going to be the best? People did always you? ask me that. No, How I am I supposed to know? What a shame. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know, man. I just know that. Tough training and Roger. Already, as a blue belt, not in the beginning blue belt, but already in his late blue belt years, he beat the crap out of me. Fair enough. I couldn't do anything with him <laughs> anymore. And we, he was just a blue belt. Yeah. Poor huh? And from there on, we became buddies, like teaching buddies. Nice. You know, it was different. And, um, yeah, you could see that Roger was special, that he was winning everything. But Roger gave an answer the other day in an interview to a question, a similar question. And it's very, you can't judge these kind of things before they happen. Yeah. So I couldn't tell you <clears throat> that you would be 10-time world champion today, could I? Mm. No. I can't in 10 years' time. <clears throat> Boy, he was 10-time world champion. But before, th before it happens, you, you can guess or you can, yeah, he has all the attributes mm. To, mm. to be what he can be. He he's amazing. He taps everybody out. He knows what he's doing. He's very good. Yeah. But to guarantee, oh, he's gonna be this or he's gonna be that, you, no one knows. Who can predict the future? Yeah. Right. You can walk out of here tomorrow and be run over by a car. It's yeah. true. Huh? It's true. Yeah. Boy, yeah. happens all the time. Cause <laughs> I'm used to looking that way. <laughs> cars come this way. Get hit by a car all the time. Whoa. <laughs> the cars in the street looking that way, the car came this way. Oh, God damn, I broke the woman's uh, mirror. Truck. The, the mirror broke. I had my backpack. And I you just gotta, drove into you. Yeah. It was a tight street. Oh, you got to pay for my mirror. I ain't paying for your mirror. You need to run me over. <laughs> Boy, I'm going to call my husband. Yeah, you call your husband. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> call my son. <laughs> Boy. Here we. All right, let's see. Uh, mm. All right, how important is it to keep up to date with contemporary trends in grappling? It's more like, do you keep up to date with contemporary art? Bear in <laughs> contemporary art. Like all the new school stuff, like... Do you still like to learn leg locks and bear and bolos and all that kind of stuff, or is it just not not no. into it? <laughs> nah, nah no. I didn't. Don't get me wrong. I'm not the kind of guy that will oh, without even having a look or trying or there's a ah that's unless obviously you see oh that's useless that's never gonna work. But you what you see people doing. Now you you uh, if it interests me yeah I like to know yeah because I know I want to know how to deal with it mm. right yeah just out of interest yeah out of interest yeah but fair enough if I'm gonna stop what I'm doing to learn something brand new yeah it's tricky if it goes with my game with yeah. what I what with what I like to do fine yeah it'll it'll match up. Yeah, then you throw it. But at this point in my life, to me, learn certain things. I'd like to learn. I'm always open to new stuff, but if I'm going to use it or not, that's a different 
Different story, yeah. Different story. His last question then, because the rest of them I think we've already answered. Uh, is it true that the origins of the Gracie family lineage are from Scotland? Yeah, the name Gracie is Scot Scottish. Cool. And then, if true, <laughs> what event caused them to immigrate to Brazil? Oh, man, you're going to have to ask the Gracie then. <laughs> You've got to ask <laughs> Wikipedia for that one. Yeah, I mean, Wikipedia's got yeah. uh, People ask all sorts of questions. You know how many I ignored just there? Uh, there was a lot many. of ignored <laughs> questions. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> they, they left the west coast of Scotland and ended up in the north of Brazil. Right. In a city called Belém, yeah. in a state called Pará, Belém de Pará, which is on the very north. There's the Amazon, Pará, Belém de uh, Pará, and then so it's way. Brazil is huge. Yeah, Brazil's huge. Big Australia. It's way on the north coast of Brazil. They probably came, I don't know, they probably came from Scotland, west coast, and landed there. I know because Roger's cousin lives in Scotland. He has a cousin that lives there, Kendra. Oh, okay. And she got in contact with the mayor of the city where the Gracies come from. No way. And she took her dad there to meet the mayor and see where the actual Gracie is, the name Gracie is from, the city. I forgot, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not good at these things. But I can get back to you and tell you the name of the city where they were and where they left, Damn. and and it landed in the in Brazil. Yeah, but it's a Scottish oh. name. It's, it, Fair it play. Is. I didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, there that's all go. the questions. The rest of them are just uh, yeah. similar stuff that we've already asked. Good question. Beautiful. Yeah. Man, it's been like two hours. Yeah, that's been a long time. Yeah, you can have that. Let's call it a it's day. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna say goodbye. <laughs> thank, thank you for coming on, Mauricio. Great to see you. Okay, man. Uh, proper <laughs> handshake, right? Man. That's not, yeah. that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's not a proper handshake. That's not a proper handshake. You won't even extend his arm. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the perfect one. Let's see it. Uh, yeah, there, it is. Yeah, there it is. Guys, <laughs> they, remember like, like and subscribe to the podcast. YouTube, Spotify, do all that. Buy Owens Instructionals. Mauricio Gomez on Instagram. Go check him out. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Now we can put this way. Good.